This is a very important video for anyone with an autoimmune disorder or for that matter any inflammatory disorders. Now of course the thing to do if you have an autoimmune condition is go to the experts, right? So this is what they will tell you what to do, right? Consume plenty of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, legumes, only have moderate amounts of alcohol, limit your sugars and sodas, and also limit your refined grains. But of course the diet is going to recommend you can have some sugars, you know, juice and alcohol and sugar and fine grains. Just don't have too much and you'll be totally fine. Well, I'm going to let you know right now, uh, you will never, ever get better if you follow that recommendation. So let's go ahead and dissect and talk about what's really behind an autoimmune disorder. Most autoimmune disorders where your own cells are attacking itself, creating a lot of collateral damage with inflammation start in the gut, but I want to talk about the mechanism of what starts it. In the gut, we have this immune barrier, okay? We also have other barriers on their skin, the internal skin. We have other immune things like acids in your stomach, bile that's produced by the gallbladder, lactic acid that's produced by some of your microbes that all prevent pathogens from invading the body. And we also have this thing called the blood-brain barrier which protects pathogens from invading the brain. And so the immune system, and I just have to say this, is so highly complex and so mysterious. Um, really, no one understands the complexity of this magical defense mechanism and how amazing it is. And when you appreciate it, you're much less susceptible to using things to try to bypass your immune system, like antibiotics, for example, or anything to stop an infection. You want to let your body learn from it and develop more immunity. But before we get into this, I want to just touch on something that's really important. Uh, it's about the immune system. Uh, since we're on the topic of autoimmune, our immune system is developed when we're small infants. Hopefully you had a natural childbirth, you weren't C-section because that can inhibit the starting of the immune system because of the microbiome that's developed in a natural uh, birthing process. And hopefully you were breastfed too because of the probiotics that are in the breast milk really uh, fortify that immune system early on. You know, when we talk about a fetus growing in a mother's womb, it's not a sterile environment. Um, they did think it was sterile at one time, but they recently found microbes in the amniotic fluid. And some babies actually have their first bowel movement right inside the womb and they found microbes in there. Where do they come from? Well, they came from the mother. And so an infant's immune system starts at birth. And if they don't have these certain factors, okay, if things are too sterile, if an infant is exposed to antibiotics or anything that can inhibit that microbiome, boy, is that immune system affected later on in life. And the recent interest that I have in this topic relates to um, farming and growing certain plants. And I'm going to be doing some very interesting research on my farm relating to this topic. But a seed that is grown in the soil is not just a little packet of genetic information. It is literally Noah's Ark. You have all sorts of microbes growing inside that seed and on the surface of that seed that helps that seed uh, be fortified in its growing process. And so they found that if you disrupt that microbiome early on, that plant won't really grow. It won't really have that microbiome to help it absorb nutrition. Well, the exact same thing happens with us, with our immune system early on. We're talking about the gut barrier, okay? There are these protective things called tight junctions that keep the cells very, very, very tight and secure. So it forms a very, very nice barrier between the inside of your body and the outside of the body, or really the inside of the gut. So if there's a pathogen trying to invade the gut, these tight junctions prevent it from doing so. Now, the medical term for this is uh, intestinal permeability. Of course, it's the same thing as a leaky gut, right? There's holes in your intestine that allow things to pass through that then don't get the stamp of immune approval through immigration, and then certain things can be tagged incorrectly and then your immune system can go after them. And then we have a war, we have inflammation, and then we can develop autoimmune diseases. Now there's this um, protein that regulates these tight junctions. 
And if this zonulin and the tight junctions are not working correctly, the immune system is not going to have the ability to differentiate between self and non-self. In other words, your immune system can make a mistake and start incorrectly assigning your own tissue being a foreign pathogen and start developing antibodies, you know, whether it's for the thyroid, the brain, um, anything. And so this zonulin protein is always elevated in autoimmune diseases, as well as a lot of inflammatory conditions. It is the primary regulator of that intestinal permeability. So if we look at what foods are best for an autoimmune disease, it would be those foods that reduce permeability and that keep this zonulin in check and prevent it from getting too high. So what I did is I cross-referenced a lot of different foods and other things that relate to not only increasing or decreasing zonulin, but also affecting the intestinal permeability as well as directly causing autoimmune diseases, okay? So the number one thing that helps regulate zonulin is your own microbiome, okay? So anything that destroys your microbiome is gonna be very, very bad for the situation. Anything that supports it is gonna be very, very good. And again, we come full circle to these microbes, right? They're not us, but they live with us and they greatly help us. Uh, a very large portion of our immune system is due to these microbes. And I really think if we look at the difference between like 50 years ago and now, we definitely do not have the numbers and the diversity of microbiome in our guts. And we definitely don't have the numbers and diversity of microbiome in the soil. I think that is really at the core of the problem. So the first food I'm gonna recommend is a probiotic food, right? That would be sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, okay? anything that will give you these friendly microbes. And you might even wanna take a probiotic as well because we're trying to increase the diversity of microbes. Now, if we take on the flip side, I think we should also talk about what to avoid. Well, guess what? Antibiotics. Antibiotics directly increase leaky gut, okay? They increase this zonulin and they directly relate and can cause autoimmune diseases. So at the first sign of a sickness, don't jump to start taking that antibiotic. And if you have to, okay, uh, definitely take a probiotic at the same time. It's so important. I mean, the amount of antibiotics that I've taken in my life are just off the charts, simply because I didn't know the long-term effects. Did you realize that when you take an antibiotic, there are gonna be certain microbes that are gonna survive that are gonna develop a resistance to that antibiotic. That microbe that now is resistant to that antibiotic can do something called horizontal gene transfer, where it shares this information with other microbes that were not exposed to that antibiotic to give them the genes that help them resist that antibiotic in the future. So these microbes can share information back and forth. And this is part of the survival mechanism that they have developed. And so the next time you take the antibiotic, it works less and less to the point where it won't work at all. Another food that is good potentially for autoimmune would be anything fermented. Okay, fermented, I'm not talking about like fermented like beer or alcohol, I'm talking about like fermented vegetables because fermented vegetables are easier to digest. They have microbes, they have the fiber that can actually feed the microbes. They have uh, all sorts of other uh, secondary chemicals that support keeping that intestinal line really, really tight. But if you have the type of autoimmune that involves damage to your gut, there's too much inflammation, then you might have a problem with vegetables in general. You might have to do carnivore for a little while, but if you don't have that, you might benefit from fermented vegetables. And this also includes vegetables, okay? Because personally, I do very well on them. I don't apparently have that much gut damage that it's a problem. Some people don't, but if you have an autoimmune disease that's affecting the gut, you might not do well on vegetables. But if you don't, vegetables can contribute to a good gut microbiome because they feed the microbes from the fiber, but also the phytonutrients in these vegetables greatly support zonulin. And one of the biggest ones that is very well researched is sulforaphane. And not only broccoli sprouts, but in broccoli, cabbage, and other cruciferous vegetables. So sulforaphane 
directly helps reverse gut dysbiosis, okay, alteration in the microbiome. Sulforaphane is a great remedy for H. pylori, another microbe in your body that is in the stomach that can get out of control and turn unfriendly in certain environments, and then it can create ulcers. But guess what? Sulforaphane can help kill H. pylori and put it back into remission. Sulforaphane helps the mucus lining in your gut, and sulforaphane directly inhibits autoimmune conditions, okay? Especially like lupus and even psoriasis and other autoimmune conditions. So you could probably get the most sulforaphane in broccoli sprouts, and you can just put that on your salad each day, or you can get sulforaphane in a supplement. All right, let's go to the flip side, what to avoid, okay? Um, anything with the herbicide glyphosate, and this is in the Roundup Ready and in GMO Foods. And if you look this up, it's interesting because you'll see these uh, mixed reviews. Of course, the ones that they say that glyphosate is fine um, are funded by companies that have a vested interest. But if you think about it, glyphosate has a patent on it being an antibiotic. Yeah, because it kills microbes. Certain things you'll see on the internet will say that um, there is no dangerous to glyphosate in humans because the pathway that uh, biochemically it interrupts is not part of the human body. Well, it is part of the microbes that live inside of our gut that we depend on, so it definitely affects us from the microbiome level. But glyphosate is in so many different things, even in non-GMO things, including wheat and other grains, not to mention soy, corn. Um, it's just all over the place. And so now I think it's appropriate to bring up another really bad thing for autoimmune diseases, and that would be gluten in certain grains, okay? Gluten uh, is a kind of a general term for several um, types of proteins that have a very devastating effect on our GI system. Now, you might think just about celiac, which is a, a very severe disorder, which is, um, you know, not as common as other disorders, but then you also have um, gluten intolerance, gluten sensitivity, which is pretty common. But what about for those people that don't have a problem with gluten, right? Well, check this out. Gluten, whether you have an intolerance or not, gluten is going to increase zonulin in everyone. So it's going to open up those tight junctions in people that are not sensitive to it. And the big problem with gluten is that it's the only protein that our bodies cannot fully digest, okay? So if we get this undigested protein floating down our GI tract, and then it opens up the hole in the gut and it goes right through, now we're going to start to have immune reactions or at least inflammation, especially if you're consuming it on a chronic basis, which most people are. And unfortunately, um, lately in the last 20 years or more, gluten has really increased in wheat and in other foods. And so you can imagine the amount of inflammation going on in our guts without us even knowing it. All right, let's talk about number four, okay? The food that you should be consuming. Uh, food, and this is kind of a, just a general category, but foods high in glutamine, okay? Glutamine, maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't, but glutamine is a good thing to reduce inflammation in your gut. Now, glutamine is an amino acid that is a precursor for glutathione, right? Which is one of the most important antioxidants in your body. And so what foods are high in glutamine? Well red cabbage. And by the way, cabbage is just good for any type of uh, gastrointestinal problem. Grass-fed beef, eggs, fish. These are all really high in glutamine. Now on the flip side, additional things you should avoid would be, of course, glucose, fructose. Both glucose and fructose increase zonulin and increase permeability. Alcohol is another one that will just put a hole right through your gut. And of course, Vegetable oils, another big one like corn oil, soy oil, cottonseed oil, canola. These vegetable oils are highly inflammatory and they definitely will create increased permeability. And of course, trans fats are also really bad for the intestinal lining. And number five food would be the omega-3 fats. And that's another category that includes, you know, cod liver oil, fish, salmon, sardines, Omega-3 is really good for the gut and keeping those junctions really, really tight. 
as well as reducing the risk for autoimmune. Now this last part is very, very important too, and this is not foods, it's just nutrients. And these nutrients that I'm gonna talk about are hands down the most important nutrients to support the zonulin, to support autoimmune, to support the gut lining to make it really, really tight, okay? We have zinc, vitamin D, vitamin A, which is in egg yolks, beef liver, butter, things like that. So now you have the basic information on what you should be consuming if you have an autoimmune disease. And since we're on the topic of the gut, another really important video for you to watch would be my more comprehensive video on the digestive system. And I put that up right here. Check it out.